Crows cawed while the last bits of sunlight vanished deep into the tall trees. It reminded me of how long I've been lost in the forest. I glanced at a crying girl sitting beside me and pat her head. There, there. Stop crying, Yoroha. When Komainu comes, we can finally go home. <laughs> Ren, what all happened to us? I'm scared. It's getting dark. What if an evil yokai comes and eats us? Calm down, Iroha. I'll stay with you. Nothing bad will happen. I'm sure of it. I almost freak out as well, especially as a human in a yokai forest, but I needed to be strong for her. Is, is that true? You'll stay with me? Of course. I'll stay with you forever. Because... Because we're friends. Friends? I nodded my head. Yes. And as your friend, I'll stay and protect you. As I bragged, I saw a sparkle in Iroha's eyes. She wiped the tears from her red cheeks and pointed one of her little fingers towards me. Father told me that f humans use pinky promises to keep their word. So, pinky promise? I looked at her little finger, and without hesitating, I linked mine with hers. I promise that I'll always stay with you, Iroha. That's what I told her, right? I promised. But... Why did it turn out this way? Komainu! I can feel my back hitting the rough asphalt road as a large shadow yokai with the shape of a fox pounces on me from the darkness. Oh my god, it's pouncing on me! Oh, oh my! Oh, oh yes! <laughs> Air squeezes out of my chest as the shadow presses against me. Oh my, it's nuzzling! <laughs> oh, my shoulders throb from the stab of its sharp claws. It's white. Knife sharp fangs in front of my face threaten to rip out my neck. Rin! Behind the yokai, Koma Inu starts casting his flame. Before it can burn me, I gather all my strength to kick the shadow and run from it. A second later, the shadow lets out a painful screech when Koma Inu's flame burns it. I stay on the ground, watching from a safe distance as Koma Inu chases away the yokai. I lay down as I catch my breath. My eyes sting and feel hot from the smoke of Koma Inu's flames. I sigh in relief when soon after, Koma Inu manages to push back the yokai as it retreats into the darkness of the night. Nice work, Koma Inu. I praise the dog-shaped yokai that approaches me. He looks... displaced. Are you okay, Ren? Still have your head over your shoulder. Yeah, very funny. Come on, get up. Koma Inu helps me get on my feet, then circles me and starts sniffing, looking for any injuries. Satisfied, he stops as he determines that the worst of my injuries are scratches on my right hand and neck. I look at my surroundings, hoping there aren't any heavy damages from that fight. Luckily, only some vases broken and some plants burned. <sighs> we have to clean up this mess before the store opens tomorrow. Good thing it didn't burn anything to ashes this time. Yep, except the tales of that cursed fox. My heart skips a beat when Kumainu mentions the fox. Ah, yeah. Let's get inside before anyone sees us. Tomorrow, I'll ask Azuki Arai to help me clean this mess. I'm exhausted now. I walk to the sliding door entrance of the store, which is also my home, but Komainu doesn't follow me. Komainu, are you coming? It was them who attacked you. You know that, right? Huh? Don't pretend to be stupid. You know the foxes attacked you, Ren. What are you trying to say? It was just nuzzling me. I mean, heck, you've, you've, you've never had someone nuzzle you before? Or have you never nuzzled anyone in your life? Like, come on, you you gotta live the dangerous life, okay? You gotta start pouncing and nuzzling like any other fox out there. Or, you know, canine. I don't know. I'm saying that you shouldn't protect our enemy. You know I hate foxes as much as you do. Why would I protect them? Huh, if that were true, we wouldn't be in this much trouble. I pursed my lips. Not this again. I hastily slide the open door, but Komainu's mouth is faster than my hands. Are you by any chance still thinking about her? Ah, <sighs> you are. Despite knowing about her half-family and what they've done, even now she still occupies my mind. Look, she just lives in my brain rent-free, okay? Like, you got a problem with that? I want to be nuzzled by a cute fox girl! I bite my lip and clench my fist. I'm tired, Komainu. Uh, I don't want to talk about this right now. What's the point of protecting your enemy? I can never understand humans. She is not an enemy. I snap at how Koma Inu speaks of her. 
I look him in the eyes and meet his judging gaze. He waits for me to give him a proper answer about her. I try to stand firm and keep my composure before him, but my heart and mind are clashing right now. Also, hold up. Is that fox girl in the beginning is half human? Was the dad human or was the dad a fox? Because I like to think that a dad was a human and just straight up went after a fox demon. <laughs> just, he just couldn't help himself. He just needed that fox demon put. <laughs> All right. She is my friend. Was. She and her clan tried to kill you just now. Or did you forget? I clench my fist, but nothing comes out of my mouth. I can't think of anything to counter his statement. We look at each other in silence before Koma Inu sighs and raises his hand to the moon. This talk is going nowhere. I'll stand guard tonight, in case they attack again. Go and get some rest, Ren, and take care of your hand. You're going to need it tomorrow. Then with that, he jumps to the highest point of the soar where he can get the best view of our surroundings. Oh, I want to remind you. Whenever you lie or hide something, you have a habit of averting your eyes. Try not to do so next time. <sighs> well, did you have to call me out like that? And then he returns to his task to guard the place. I hate it, but I can't counter his words. Gritting my teeth. I remember that I'll have a busy day tomorrow. I drag my heavy feet inside the store and try to bury my anger. Is she in the house? Is what I'm wondering. Welcome to Kohana. How may I help you? Kohana is an old confection store I inherited from my late parents. All four of us lived here years ago, but now it's just me and Koma Inu. I was born here, but Koma Inu's lived here even longer. Ever since I was little, yokai have always visited for our confections. Even though I'm human, I have no problem seeing or interacting with them. Some of them look scary, but once you get to know them, they're not that different from my human customers. And just like humans, some of them like to poke their noses into other people's businesses. Young master, what happened to you? What's that wound? One of our yokai regular points out the wound on my hand. Meanwhile, others are busy chatting while browsing our confections. Oh, this is a... Uh, nothing. Just a clumsy accident in the kitchen. Oh my, how many times is that? You should be more careful. It's nothing serious. Don't worry. So, which one would it be today? It's, it's this store, right? The one they mentioned? Ugh. I can smell that wicked fox here. Which one? That one. The half-human, half-yokai that stinks the most. Ah! Oh god, this particular group of yokai are regulars who somehow enjoy gossipy about what happens in the neighborhood. They're not evil, but they can be annoying on some days. Unfortunately for me, they're talking about things I don't want to hear about right now. Uh, may I take your order? Ah! Yeah, young master! It's just... People said the store had a different scent this morning. They also talked about the problematic Hanyo that was always making a scene in the neighborhood. I stay silent, knowing where this conversation will lead. It's them, right? The one who cursed this place and... While the yokai sniffs my wounded hand, completely ignoring how uncomfortable that makes me. <laughs> I can smell that fox from your wound. Yeah, young master, so is it true that... That it was the foxes who murdered your parents. My throat constricts as my breath becomes heavy. Fist clenched. I try to hold myself together and not make a scene. But, so hard. Why would they remind me about? Alright, you guys have been dawdling here too long. Go home. We have a lot of work to do. And here's the Rakugan that you ordered. Now go! Shoo! The gossiping yokai are annoyed, but I don't care. I don't want to waste my time with them anymore. Are you okay, Rin? Thanks. You came just the right time. Don't sweat it. And after closing the store, Azuki Arai helps clean up while prepares some bread beans in the kitchen up for a new batch of uncle. While washing the raw beans in a bowl of water, I look at a calendar on the wall. October 28th. That day is close. You handled work pretty well today, Ren. Well, I had some help. It's almost a day, isn't it? Koma Inu's gaze also falls on the calendar. I nod. It's been five years, and I think it's finally time for us to make a decision. My hands freeze. My eyes are glued to the red beans under the water. What decision? Ren, don't make this difficult. I promise your parents to protect your life and this store. That's why we need to do something before it gets worse. I wipe my hands with a towel and unintentionally throw it too hard from the anger building up inside me. Look at me, Koma Inu. I'm still alive. Breathing and well. 
We're doing fine. You're being paranoid. We're doing fine for now. Foxes are a threat, Ren. They're cowards. But once they're set on doing something, they'll do everything in their power to get it. Those wounds on your hand and neck are proof they won't stop until you die. I clenched my fist, frustrated that I can't see anything in return. Koma Inu is right. The foxes constantly attack us, but they are getting more frequent and desperate these days. I have respected your wish to act passively to their attacks because you care about that Hanyo girl, but this won't work anymore. The anniversary of your parents' death is in two days, and I will only stay until then. If those foxes attack us after that, it will be the end of them. You can't do that! I failed to protect your parents five years ago. I will not make the same mistake again! I care about you, Ren. I know very well what you've been through after the death of your parents. I don't want your efforts in reopening the store to be in vain. The fire of Komainu's mane blows dangerously, as if reflecting the anger and guilt inside his heart. He turns around and leaves. I try to sleep. Komainu's warnings ring inside my head, and I can't put my mind at ease. I stare at the last quarter moon outside. The autumn wind feels cold and crisp, but I need it to clear my mind. If Komainu said that he's going to end the foxes, then it will happen. I shudder at the possibility of bloodshed in my neighborhood. Fights between yokai are not uncommon, and things can get pretty ugly, but... I don't know. I guess it's naive of me to think that we can get along with the foxes. Maybe because things were so peaceful in the past few years, like back then. Phew! I made it! Here! It's done! Well, Ren! Your manju is so pretty. It looks just like your father's. Yeah, thanks. Yours is pretty too. Your manju looks so smooth and round. I had to do it numerous times, but you did it well on your first try. The fox-eared little girl grinned and nodded her head. Pink tinted her cheeks. I couldn't help but think that she was cute when I looked at her. Father always told me to be careful around yokai, but I like being around Iroha. The smile always brightened my mood after a tiring day of training. I feel like your confections are different from mine or uncle's. I don't know. They feel warm and I can sense your kindness and passion in them. My god, why does it have to be so sweet? Really? But do you like it? I love it. I think your confections are the best. Then. Then I'll work hard so I can keep making confections for you. I smile at those sweet memories. I think that was the first time I decided to really pursue this job, making confections, so I could keep making them for Iroha. My childhood with her was fun. Iroha frequently visited and we played around the neighborhood without any worries. She was like the little sister I never had. I wonder, since when did a wall separating our lives exist? We used to be together wherever we went, but one day, I noticed that the gleam in her eyes dimmed. Eventually, we stopped talking to each other. Remember how those yokai talked about her? How they despised her for being half and how she brought trouble to the neighborhood? Oh, screw them. They don't know a thing about Iroha and the hardships she faces with the foxes. I believe her. I want to. I believe she's not a bad person. That she has reasons behind her actions and I want to hear them from her. Before anything gets worse, I have to do something. I need to talk to her. The kitchen is empty. I take out just enough ingredients to make a few pieces of confection. I stare at them for a moment, pondering about which confection I should make. A long time ago, Iroha told me that Okora down the street from the store is hers, and if I put an offering there, she'll come to me. Silly me. I'm not even sure if that method still works, but I don't know any other way to contact her, and if I don't talk to her now, things will go downhill very fast. If I can prevent bloodshed between Komainu and Iroha, I'll do everything I can. I close my eyes and think about what would be appropriate for this confection, something that can rekindle a broken relationship. That reminds Iroha of our childhood memories. Oh, gosh. Um, to remind Iroha about our childhood memories or to rekindle our broken relationship? I mean, Iroha liked the manju, so I'll go for this. Joya manju represents the beginning of the season. I made it for her whenever the seasons change. I hope this will convey my wish to start anew with her. It's done. A confection filled with the hopes and our memories. I hope she'll re accept this. How many years has it been since I last came to this place? This Hokora belongs to Iroha. It's neglected and the rain and dark surroundings don't make the eerie atmosphere any better. People rarely walk down the street, so this Hokora never has any offerings. That's why the foxes thought this was suitable for Iroha. I was angry when I first heard about that, but Iroha never complained. 
And now this is my first offering after many years. I wonder how Iroha will react when she comes. I put the confection on the Hokora altar and pray, hoping she'll answer my call. The cold wind snaps me out of my days. I'm not sure how long I've been waiting for Iroha while sheltered under the trees. It must be past midnight now. I'm stupid for thinking she'd come immediately after all these years, but I can't afford to miss my chance. If the foxes are going to attack again after the anniversary of my parents' death, I have to warn Iroha about Komainu. That sound! Iroha? From the darkness, a short haired girl emerges. Even though it's covered by a mask, I know that small face and black hair very well. I run to her, anxious yet excited to see my old friend after so many years have passed. Iroha! I... I thought you wouldn't come. I... Why? Huh? Why did you come here with that... thing? After all these years, she turns to the confection on the Hokora altar. She didn't sound happy that I called her with it. Iroha, please listen. I... I just want to tell you that. I know. That you're the one who sent the yokai to attack us. I refuse to believe that. I know you're being used by the foxes. You're not like them. You're different. I know that. Please, Iroha. Stay away from the foxes. Komai Inu told me that if they attack us again, he'll end you for good this time. I can never let that happen. That's why I called you here today. Iroha remains quiet. I bite my lips as my anxiety starts to creep up. I brought you Joyamanju as an offering in the hopes that we can start our friendship again. I realize I haven't been on good terms with you for the past few years. We went our separate ways, but you're still an important friend to me, Iroha. I won't let the foxes put you in danger anymore. Iroha looks down, the darkness of the night covering her mask. I take a few steps towards her. Iroha, go home, Ren. Huh? Just go home! Iroha pushes me away. Her face is full of her anger, but reflected in her black eyes, I can also see pain. It's useless. You're just wasting your time by bringing me that confection. Iroha, why? You told me to stay away from my family, to start over our friendship. It's all too late. You promised me that we'd always stay together because you weren't there when I needed you the most. My instincts tell me to take a few steps away from Iroha. From her feet, a black-shaped fox shadow emerges. It's a shadow that attacked us from the night before. So it's true that Iroha has been behind us. Damn it. But the foxes were. They stayed with me. Iroha looks threatening with the shadow looming behind her. I struggle to gulp as fear starts to grow inside me. Foxes are only using you for the personal gain, Iroha. What do you know? Everything is fine in your life. Someone like you who has everything couldn't possibly understand how I feel. That's... I've been alone this whole time, defending myself. But now that your life is on the line, you suddenly care for me again? You're pathetic. I've never seen Iroha look at me with so much resentment and bitterness before. My place is with the foxes and I'm staying with them. Don't ever show your face here again. The fox-shaped shadow covers her body, and she disappears into the night. My fist clenches, nails stabbing into my flesh. I'm left alone in the darkness with a gaping hole in my heart. I have everything to say. Yuroha, you know nothing about me either. Mmm, today's monaka is really good. Mmm, yeah, mom's monaka is the best. Even dad can't make one as tasty as hers. Remember that beautiful afternoon when we were sat at a porch with Munchi and some fresh monaka? Iroha visited after my confection lesson with father. How nice! Your mother is always so kind and makes delicious confections too. I wonder if my mother would be as kind as her if she were here. Huh? What do you mean? Where did she go? My father told me that she passed away soon after I was born. Oh, I'm sorry. It's alright. I don't know much about her. Stop asking father about her because it made him sad. Uh, we have her picture at home, and she's really pretty. I want to see it too. Can we go to your house? I... I don't think my family would like that. They don't like humans. Even though he's kind, they're even mean to my father because he's human. I knew it, so the father did go after some fox poon. Oh god. Oh god, what am I saying? Oh god. I don't want them to hurt you too, Ren. I'm sorry. I remember when father warned me to be careful around yokai, especially Roha's family. We have a complicated relationship with foxes, he said. At that time, I didn't really understand what he meant. It's okay. Don't worry about it. But are they mean to you too? Iroha didn't answer me right away. 
Her once cheerful face turned sad and sullen. I've heard my great-grandfather say that family is everything, but he also told me that my blood's tainted and I'm a disgrace to the family. Your blood is... tainted? What does that mean? I don't know. My family doesn't like me because of it. Sometimes they say mean things to me or turn into monsters to make me cry. I don't like them. Iroha's eyes welled up with tears. I didn't know what to say. My parents called at me at times, but they were never mean. They were kind and loving and supported me whenever I needed help. The foxes might be Iroha's family, but it was wrong of them to make her cry. I patted Iroha's head. I didn't know how else to cheer her up rather than to be there for her. I don't understand what they did, but you're the nicest girl I've ever met, Iroha. Whenever you're sad, come here. I'll cheer you up and we'll play together till you laugh again. She lifted her head and laughed at my response. The only people who are kind to me are my father and your family in Kohana. But I said... But I especially like you, Ren. You're the kindest. Ah, Koma Inu is kind too. Don't tell him this, but I think his face is scary. <laughs> You're right about that, Iroha. Yeah, <sighs> this is bad. What do I do? I look at a batch of confections I just made. They're a disaster. Azuki Arai will laugh at me if they see them. I thought keeping busy at work would take my mind off yesterday, from Koma Inu's warning to Iroha, but it wasn't working. What else can I do to stop them from hurting each other? I'm just a human in the middle of affairs between yokai. Can I actually do something? Iroha. The name slips out of my mouth and I'm flooded with guilt. I wasn't there when she needed me. I abandoned her for five years. I can't deny that. What a friend I was after I promised that I'd always be by her side. I bite my lips, hating myself for turning into the source of her pain. People say that confections represent their creator's heart, yet it feels pointless to convey my feelings for her. The confectionery skills I've pursued my whole life feels meaningless if I can't, if they can't make her happy. I reach out to destroy the confection, but before I can do it, I hear Komainu calling me. Ren. I turn my head to the kitchen door. Komainu stands there with a solemn face. What is it? I need you to come with me. There's something I want to show you. I feel uneasy as so I follow him outside the store. The street leads to the Hokora. Why is he taking us here? I asked him what he wants to show me, but he doesn't answer. Does this have something to do with Iroha? Near the Hokora, Komainu stops. A figure lays on the ground. That's... Iroha! I rush to Iroha, panicky as I check her condition. She's unconscious. Bites and scratches cover her body and are deep enough that blood's dripping from them. I look at Komainu in disbelief. Did he do this? Am I too late? Before you say anything, no, this wasn't my doing. I found her in this condition when I patrolled the area. A sigh in relief. If this was Komainu's doing, I wouldn't know how to face him. You know that fights between yokai aren't uncommon, but look at her wounds. I can see that whoever did this was merciless. Perhaps it's because of the human blood in her veins. I grip my teeth, but we don't have time for that. I carefully wrap my arms around Iroha to carry her back to the store. Where do you think you're taking her? She's still breathing, but if I don't take care of her wounds, she might not make it. I'm bringing her to Kohana. You're going to help me, Komainu. He opens his mouth to protest, shaking his head disapprovingly. I knew this would happen the moment I brought you here, Ren. I warned you that helping this Hanya wouldn't bring us any good. It's better to leave her to her fate. I won't repeat myself. I'm taking her to the store, with or without your approval. Things have come down. Azuki Arai had panicked when I brought Iroha in through the back door and caused a bit of a ruckus. Komainu brought them outside to calm down while I tended to Iroha's wounds in one of the rooms. I've done what I can. I might call a yokai healer later, but her wounds were already healing when I cleaned them, so hopefully it won't be necessary. Iroha is still unconscious though. Ren, Azuki Arai needs you in the kitchen. We have to get to work. Komainu enters the room. He looks at Iroha suspiciously, but doesn't try to harm her. I... I can't leave Iroha alone. She won't be alone. I'll look after her until she wakes up. You have responsibility to the store and its customers. You should honor it. <sighs> store was busy when I came back, and Azuki Arai can only do so much. I don't want to go, but I trust you, Komainu. When she wakes up, you better not scare her. Yes, yes. Now go. Make some confections. <sighs> Where am I? You're finally awake. This is... Kohana? So what? I'm a prisoner now? Huh. Prisoner? Your mind's been twisted by the foxes, I see. You think Ren would take you as his prisoner? 
You should watch your mouth, little girl. You're injured, and against my better judgment, he brought you here to take care of you. I expect you to thank him later, but I might be expecting too much. I don't need your help, and you don't have to pretend to be nice to me. I can feel your intent to kill me. You and your clan caused my previous master's death. If you tried to hurt my current master, if it weren't for his feelings for you, you'd be dead this very moment. But regardless of what I think, Ren trusts me to look after you, so you're safe with me. You're always here in time. I'm leaving. <clears throat> you haven't completely recovered yet. Moving around will only make the wounds worse. Give them a few more hours, then you'll be free to go. I don't need your kindness. Just leave me alone. Why do you work so hard to push away others around you, Iroha? You, of all people, should know how much Ren cares about you. Despite what your clan did to his parents and what you've done to him lately, he still thinks highly of you as his friend. If you have a single ounce of gratitude left inside you, you should leave him alone. It's too late to take back what I've done. Everything has already happened, already set in motion. It's better to see things through to the end. You're right, though. Ren should have left me there because this won't stop my clan from attacking him and the store. Ren told me the next time we attack, he'll end this for good. You might as well end me now so you'll have one less thing to worry about later. <sighs> it don't make it this any easier for any of us, little girl. I'll tell Ren you're awake. When Komai Nu tells me that Iroha's awake, I drop my work to hurry to her room, but stop as I remember she'll need food to replenish her energy. I don't have a lot of food in the kitchen because it's used to make confections for the store. Fortunately, I always keep enough to make a simple rice ball, so I quickly prepare some for Iroha. I'm eager to see her, but when the rice balls are done, a realization strikes me. Yesterday, my attempt to persuade Iroha to leave the foxes failed, but I won't give up yet. She's here now and away from the foxes. This could be my chance to express my feelings to her. Look my confectionery tools on the table. Confections are representations of the crafter's heart, is what my father told me. I failed to convey my feelings last time. Yet confections are the one thing that's bound us together since we were children. It's an unspoken language we share. A little thing inside our hearts. Should I try to make her a confection again? One last time? Monaka, to show warmth of family. Um, Usagi Manju, as a sign of good luck and good omen. I know she likes Manju, but... I feel like Monaka would make more sense, so I'm going to show her the warmth of family. Monaka is Kohana's trademark confection. The recipe has been passed down from generation to generation. My late mother used to make it for us. It's done. It might be futile, but I hope this time the feelings I poured into this confection gets through to her. When I entered the room, Iroha is sitting and looking at the garden outside. I'm glad to see you're up already. How are you feeling? I, uh, brought you some food. It lost a lot of blood, so I thought this would help you heal faster. It's not much, but it's something. Iroha glances at the rice balls, confection, and tea I brought, then sigh. As I thought, my efforts were futile. But then she reaches for the rice balls and starts eating. She doesn't speak as she finishes them. After sipping the green tea, she takes the confection and stares at it. This confection. It's Kohana Special Monaka. I made it just now. I hope you like it. Iroha looks at me before taking a bite. As she chews, her ears twitch a bit. I've made Monaka countless times now, but seeing her reaction makes me nervous. It still tastes the same. Oh, you notice? I'm glad! Do you remember how my mother used to prepare Monaka for our afternoon snack? After I made confection with my father, you and I used to eat this together, and then we played until sunset. You need to stop, Ren. Huh? You keep trying to remind me of the good old days we shared together, but they're long gone. No matter how hard you try, it can no longer be the Iroha you used to know. I... I understand that, but... I want you to know that there's a place for you in Kohana. I've always thought of you as part of my family. You and Komainu. I know it's selfish to ask you to leave the foxes because they're still your family, but... I don't think being with them will bring you any good. Perhaps you're right. Then you'll... You brought me Joyo Manji yesterday and said you want to start our friendship over. But I think that's a lie. No! That's... Admitted, Ren. As a half-fox, I'm an enemy to your family. I've never been your friend or part of your family, no matter how much time we spent together when we were young, because I can't forget how you left me alone five years ago. I can't reply because it's true that I left her. Iroha raises her bandaged arm. I remember that the scratch there is deep. I think you know how I got these wounds. Yukai can't stand the scent of my mixed blood. They hate it. This is the price I pay for my carelessness, and this hasn't been the first time. You get it, don't you, Ren? 
A Hanyo like me doesn't belong in this world. You cast me out of this place, a place I used to think of as my home, but the foxes you hate so much took me in. I belong to them now. But Iroha, you know they made you do bad things. The foxes are using you. They've never cared about you. I heard it cover my mouth, but it's too late. I can't take my words back. I... I'm sorry. I didn't mean... No need to apologize. You've let your feelings be known. Thanks for the food, but I won't be needing your help. I'm leaving. Iroha stands and walks towards the garden. I follow behind her. Iroha, please, listen to me. Kumainu, you've already said that Kumainu and my clan if we attack again. He better do his job as a guardian because we won't stop until you die. Chills run down my spine as she gazes at me with her black eyes full of anger and resentment. The fox-shaped shadow once again rises from her feet and covers her entire body. She disappears. Tomorrow's October 30th, the day my parents passed away. I can never forget what happened. When I got home, part of the store was enveloped in black suit. The smoke smelt both bitter and sweet from the sugar that burned in the fire. Kumainu didn't speak. He just stayed by my side as I stared at what remained of the place I called home. Later, in that cold room I had to go to, it smelled of chemicals. My parents' bodies laid on metal tables, covered from head to toe with white cloth. An officer called me by my name, gave me his condolences, and proceeded to report the cause of fire. The foxes did this was my only thought, as I walked home that night. The foxes did this. Ren! I... I'm sorry for appearing to you like this, but I... I don't know where else I can go. I... Ren? Leave. What do you mean, Ren? Ren! Ugh. My vision is blurry and my ears are ringing. Something wet drips down my temple. Fire surrounds me as I heard a beastly growl. When I left home tonight, I didn't think I'd see such chaos. When my vision clears, I see Koma Inu shielding me from an enemy's attack. It looks like he can hold up for now, but I'm not sure how long he can keep it up. Today is October 30th, five years to the day since my parents passed. After closing the store early, we went to the graveyard to pay our respects. The graveyard was empty and everything was peaceful, until that fox-shaped shadow showed up in the dust. They charged at me without warning, throwing my body against the hard tombstones. Ren, are you alright? Kumainu? Can you get up? You hit your head pretty hard. We need to get out of here. Yell, Matt. Watch out! Kumainu! The fox-shaped shadow launches at us and hits Kumainu while his guard is down. He's thrown into a tombstone, crushing it on impact. I rush to Kumainu's side, despite the throbbing pain in my head. He's breathing, but his eyes are closed. He's unconscious. I'm torn between anger and fear when I see the bites and claw marks on his body. This only happened because he's protecting me. The fox-shaped shadow approaches me. Its eyes glowed with the intent to kill me. You... Demon... I understand why you attacked me at Kohana, but... But... To attack us in a cemetery and cause this much harm to Koma Inu? You're out of line, Iroha! Show yourself! I know you're here, Iroha! If you want to hurt me so badly, then show yourself! Settle this, right here, right now! A girl wearing a fox mask appears from the fog. From behind her mask, her cold eyes pierce mine. Why? Iroha, isn't it obvious? My clan wants to eliminate you. Stop this madness, Iroha! Can't you see that the foxes are turning us against each other? I know this isn't who you are. Silence! The fox-shaped shadow hits me with its tail, forcing the air out of my lungs. I grit my teeth and clutch my stomach. Even standing is a challenge for me. Iroha approaches me calmly, looking down at me with cold eyes. How many times must I tell you that I'm no longer the Iroha you used to know? I'm part of my clan now. I belong to the foxes. I belong to the foxes. You are... My friend, Iroha. You still believe that? This is who I am, Ren. A fox is going to kill you and bring destruction to Kohana, just like I did five years ago. What? What do you mean? You heard me, Ren. Iroha bends over and whispers in my ear. I'm the one who caused death for your parents. That's not true. Why would I lie? I caused their deaths. It's true. Always so happy and peaceful, the residents of Kohana were so different from everyone back home. The moment I stepped out of its doors, I returned to a world full of curses and hatred. Everyone hates the Hanyo girl, and that includes you, Ren. 
I'll never hate you, Iroha. Really? Then let me tell you a story. Five years ago, a young fox overheard a plan to attack a certain confection store. We're going to do everything we can to destroy it, she heard. Of course, the stupid young fox was caught eavesdropping immediately. You think she would have said something to stop the attack since the confection store that she cared so deeply for was her haven. Instead, she cowered, mouth shut tight. She simply stood there, watching as the flames devoured the store and its residents into ashes. Um, not doing anything does not make you complicit. What the heck? I did nothing when my clan attacked Kohana. And soon after, I heard your parents died. I could have prevented that, but I didn't. Don't you hate me now for letting your parents die? I'll never hate you because the one who killed my parents wasn't you nor the foxes. What? I kept it to myself all this time, holding on to it like my life depended on it. But now it's time to let go, to let you know, Iroha. The fire that devoured Kohana that afternoon wasn't caused by the foxes. It was an accident. Iroha's eyes snap wide open in shock. She takes a few steps back. I'm sure she doubts me, but... The foxes did attack Kohana that day, and they destroyed a lot of the story, yet my parents survived because Koma Inu protected them. But they sent him to protect me on the way home, and when we returned, the fire had already burned the store and my parents inside it. The next day, I was told the leaking gas pipe caused the fire. Maybe the leak happened before or after the attack, but the fight between Koma Inu and the foxes started the fire. Once it reached the gas leak, the explosion destroyed the building and trapped my parents inside. If only the foxes didn't attack that day. If only Koma Inu stayed with them instead of coming to me. If only Iroha could have stopped the foxes. If only I was there. No, this would have happened. For five years, I've kept this secret from you so that the guilt would gnaw away at you from the inside. I channel all my hatred and anger onto you, like the coward I am, and cause you so much pain and suffering. You're lying. I hate the foxes. Sometimes that hatred was so overwhelming that I thought of sending Koma Inu to kill them, not caring what they'd do to him. Those times, I just wanted the foxes to suffer. Then I remember how you'd lose your family if that happened. STOP IT! A strong gust of wind blows and flings me away from her. The surroundings darken as if a shadow blankets the sky. Is this Aroha's power? Aroha, listen to me! No, don't come near me! I struggle to take steps towards her. The powerful wind screams in my ear and whips against my body, but I still walk. When I get close enough, the fox-shaped shadow positions itself to attack me. But before I can, I extend my hands as far as possible and snatch her mask off. When the wind fades and the darkness dissipates, her face is revealed. She's crying. You're lying. Iroha, I'm sorry for keeping the truth away from you all this time and causing you so much pain. You crush my heart every time I remember what happened to my parents, to my home, and my selfishness that made you and Kumayinu suffer. I still remember the day you came to me crying, telling me you had nowhere else to go, and I took my resentment out on you and told you to leave. When I heard that your father left you that day, I regretted my actions ever since. When you attacked Kohana a few days ago, I knew that all of that hatred was finally being repaid to me. All of your pain and suffering was because of me. That's why I'm sorry. Why? Why are you apologizing? I did nothing when I heard about the attack. My parents would still be alive and did something. I'm the one who caused all this. It's not true. You couldn't have known that would have That's not true. You couldn't have known what would have happened. Please, don't blame yourself, Iroha. Try to kill you, Ren. I've hurt Komainu too. I know, but I'm willing to put everything behind this. You're important to me. I care about you. So please, I forgive you. Can you forgive me? Iroha throws herself at me, hugging me tightly while crying her eyes out. Between her wails, she repeatedly cries out, I'm sorry. Tears flow from my eyes as I hug her back. I'm sorry too, I whisper. Years of hatred, sorrow, and guilt finally crumble away, like falling leaves in the autumn. This afternoon, I can finally breathe peacefully again. Today's October 30th. Autumn greets us with crisp, cold air and crimson leaves. Once again, I pay my respects at my parents' grave. I run, afraid to make a certain girl wait too long. You sure took your sweet time, Ren. 
I'm sorry. Something came up at the store. Eroha stands near my parents' graves. She folds her arms, annoyed by my lateness. Iroha and I light some incense. We put them on the altar and pray in silence. When I open my eyes, Iroha is still praying. I smile and wait patiently until she opens her eyes. That's a long prayer. What did she tell them? I ask for their forgiveness for all the bad things I've done to you and Gohana. I also thank them for their kindness and for giving me an opportunity to be part of your family. You've always been part of my family, Iroha. Thank you, but even after a year, Komainu still keeps his distance from me. Yeah, he may not look like it, but he's just shy. When you came to Kohana last year and bowed deeply to ask for his forgiveness, I think he already accepted you as part of Kohana. He has his own ways of showing his affection. Just give him some time. If you say so, and um, I brought this today as an offering. Will this be alright? Hiroha takes out a box and shows me the confection inside it. Monaka! Did you make them yourself? Yeah, I tried. Just like you taught me, but even after a few attempts, this was the best I could do. I'm sure my parents would like it. Besides, you'll still have plenty of time to practice this now that you live at Kohana. It still feels unreal that I'm back to this place after my childhood. When you invited me to live with you in Koma Inu, the thoughts of leaving the foxes scared me, but at the same time, being with you in Kohana always feels right. Like it's a home I truly belong to. When you brought those Joyamanju to my Hokora, they reminded me that broken relationships can be mended, that someone like me deserves a new hopeful beginning. They gave me the strength to finally take a step forward, to let go of everything that's dragged me down. Thank you, Ren, for being there and believing in me. I'm still a fox, but I'm part of your clan now, and I swear to protect you and our clan from anyone that threatens us. Her eyes burn with determination. I smile and take her hand. A silver line wrapped around her ring figure reflects the light of the autumn sun. We'll protect each other. You, me, and Komainu. Because we're family. Iroha smiles. It's one I've known for a long time. A sincere smile that comes from her heart. Let's go home, Iroha. Koma Inu is waiting for us at Kohana. Yeah! My god. This is such a fluffy, sweet visual novel. Holy heck. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. Alongside with uh, the rest of my links like Discord and Twitch. I'm streaming again. So, hey, uh, I hope to see you guys over there too. Uh, if you guys want to see me just like, you know, just chill and play some video games. Chill being a bit off a of stretch considering sometimes I play Celeste, which makes me rage like an ass. But anyway, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day and i'll be seeing you in the next video this is lionel signing off ciao